Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to have you here today on our webinar event uh, hosted by Caravanserai Project. The event I have the pleasure to have, to present and introduce our uh, guest speaker, David Pearson. He is bringing us great opportunities, good news for all the business owners in the Inland Empire. And uh, the webinar today is uh, titled Transforming Your Digital Future, Access at No Cost Support. This is a, not only a webinar to you know, know more about what's going on with the technology, but also it's a great opportunity for free for small business owners. And I would encourage you to take advantage of it and also ask all type of questions to David so that you can access and um, uh, use this resource as much as you can. Okay. Um, the idea uh, today in today's webinar is also uh, you know, share with you all the, not only the opportunities, but also how you, with your business, can uh, bring questions that are more specific for this, this business, for your business, and also use this resource that David is gonna share with us. Well, David has been director of the entrepreneurial programs in, at UCR. I had the pleasure to work with him. He's not only a, you know, very smart guy, he holds a PhD. Um, in uh, biochemistry and biophysics, please, uh, please David, correct me, um, in molecular biophysics and bio in biochemistry from Yale University. <laughs> he is also an MBA from the MIT Sloan School of Management. So as you can tell, he's a you know, very smart person, but also a very good person and a great um, former colleague. So I, I would really encourage you to ask questions and all type of, you know, uh, maybe uh, ideas that you wanna share with him uh, during the session. He is gonna be um, connecting you with uh, the different uh, resources that are part of the, the TASIS program or TASIS program in Spanish, okay? And uh, he will provide more uh, details about what is this about and how you can actually schedule a consultation with him and uh, see how you can use this resource. Bueno. Well, yeah, I'm going to switch to Spanish to also uh, invite uh, Spanish speakers as well. Um, la idea es que ustedes puedan aprovechar también este recurso, no importa si no hablan inglés, también este recurso está disponible en algunos tópicos en español. Así es que, bueno, con esto voy a dejar entonces a, a David. Having said that, I'm going to pass the floor to David. David, are you, are you around? <laughs> I saw you. I am here. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, great. Well, th thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, and Caro, thanks for the very generous uh, background. It's been a pleasure working with you in the past at UCR. And also, Mihai, I've met you in, I guess, the early days of when I joined about five years ago. And I've uh, been following and, and, and attending some of the events for Caravanserai. And I'm really impressed with the uh, knowledge and, and skill set that you're bringing to uh, business people from the Coachella Valley, actually from anywhere. And so uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, despite my very technical background, uh, the last five years have been working in the real world. And so I'm, I'm pleased to share with you a program that I think today that many of you, if not all of you, will say, hey, there's something in this for me. And uh, so I'm going to uh, be walking through some slides that I have. You will be getting a copy of it and a slightly edited copy of it, as well as a follow-up email that gives you, again, the instructions for how to access the, the consulting uh, services that I'll be uh, discussing. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to just mention that uh, my background, as, uh, as you might guess, was in the pharmaceutical and biotechnology area. And uh, I worked for 35 years in, in that business, uh, 20 of it over in Europe, and moved to uh, Carlsbad about uh, 18 years ago. But then I uh, moved with my wife and up to Idlewild, and, and that's now our home. So it's very easy for me to drop down to the, to the desert and uh, Coachella Valley. And I'm very often at the UCR campus in Palm Desert. And so if there's an opportunity for us to meet in person, I would uh, be very happy to, uh, to do that. 
So uh, let me get uh, get started. Um, the The title slide mentions this Tacy's or Tassies. I uh, unfortunately I'm the one who came up with the name for it. I can only blame myself, but it means technical assistance for COVID impacted Inland Empire small business. And this was the name for a grant that we won from the federal uh, EDA, Economic Development Administration. And you'll be seeing on, on a number of the slides, a QR code. Uh, you'll be pr provided with this in the email follow-up as well. This is the link to the website for, for uh, TACES or TASIs. And I'll show you what that looks like in a few minutes. So my goal here is to um, explain to you what the program is, give you examples that I think are relevant for small business owners or business owners in general, and to make sure that you have a clear understanding of how you can access uh, this program. So that's, uh, I think we'll probably be spending 45 minutes or so, and I'd love to take your questions. You can uh, either say them verbally or you can write them to Caro in the chat. And if you um, would like to do that in Spanish, she'll do the translation uh, for us as we go along as well. So uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Thanks. So basically two years ago, uh, we wrote from the university and we received a federal grant. And the major part of that grant allows us to provide free consulting services. And I'm going to explain in a few slides how we chose these four topics, but we identified four areas of technology that we saw becoming much more important for businesses to understand in order to be competitive, in order to attract bright, talented uh, coworkers. And these are in the areas of cybersecurity, uh, mobile business, data analytics, and robotics and automation. And, I, and I'll be spending some time on each of these to describe their, their relevance. As part of the program, we also have been providing educational webinars. Uh, we did one about a month ago on how to use chat GPT. And we've also provided ones on cybersecurity and data analytics. And then finally, I'd like to mention an important activity that I'll also put, or you'll find the information on the website. We've been financial sponsors of Cal State San Bernardino's Financial Fitness Bootcamp. And that's part of the Inland Empire Center for Entrepreneurism who are a partner in that. And I don't think there's a single person on this call who doesn't feel that they could use a refresher on finance for their business. And I would encourage you to follow the links on the website. It's another free program, uh, really highly regarded in the region. And it takes place on four consecutive weeks, uh, I think two hours each night for four weeks. But um, I attended the first one of those, and uh, I found it very helpful myself. Next, please. So the uh, the offer that we're that we're making is that you, as a business owner, or as you'll hear me say later on, whoever it is in your company who is really interested in technology, it doesn't have to be the owner. It may be your daughter, or the son, or you know the the new product manager. But what we'll set you up with is you'll receive six to eight hours of no cost personalized coaching from specialists in each of those four areas. It's not from me, but it's from somebody who lives and breathes this business. And what you'll do with them is you'll discuss what your business is all about, what the challenges are. And then you'll explore how the technology that you've chosen is the most interesting for you can be implemented in your company and think about how your business is likely to change as you go forward. So uh, that's the, really the high level overview. And I'd like to go now into a little bit of background for two or three uh, slides. And then uh, we'll turn to uh, some learnings that we've had. We've now had about 30 companies go through the consulting process already. And we've learned a number of things I'd like to share with you. And then uh, we'll visit the website uh, don't worry, you don't have to connect to it. I've got some images of it and show you how easy it is to access uh, the TACES program. And then in the second part of the discussion or the presentation today, I'll actually take you to some of the, the website materials that are available because they explain quite clearly for a business owner uh, what it is that, that you want to know or should consider about each of those four 
uh, consulting topics. So that's the, uh, the program for today. Uh, let's move into it then. Uh, this is uh, part of a study that I did, uh, it's almost two years ago now, but the university has not traditionally been very active in, in outreach to the uh, Inland Empire small business community. And we decided that we wanted to change that situation. We have a lot of resources at the university that can come to the aid of the small business owner or as I said, businesses in general. So we did a study and found that there were more than 200 organizations offering technical assistance or help of some sort, most of it free from around the Inland Empire. And Caravanserai is, is one of those prime examples. And I have them here on the chart as well. And what this, this diagram just very briefly is supposed to, to capture is on the vertical, on the up and down axis, we're looking at how much technology is important to a company. So at the top, those are more technology intensive organizations, ones that can serve technology oriented businesses. And from the left to the right is the size of the business, everything from one employee up to 50 or more. And on the next slide, you'll see I've grouped uh, to, at a very high level. Next slide, please. There we go. If you look at the, the organizations, they very broadly fall into these kinds of groupings. And it shows that there are organizations that are philanthropic. Uh, there are the small business development centers. There's the Cal State San Bernardino uh, Inland Empire Center for Entrepreneurism. Every city has got its chamber of commerce and the counties as well have economic development organizations. We don't have too many industry associations here in our region but there are a couple. And then we have uh, a circle at the top for UC Riverside, which as you might guess shows that most of the offerings that the university uh, have are um, technology driven, at least as far as entrepreneurism goes. We do have a lot of workforce development programs uh, in agriculture, in sustainable transportation and, and logistics. I don't have time today to go into this, but if there's interest, please, uh, let uh, Mihai or Caro know, and we can do a, a follow-up um, webinar about you know the whole range of services that are available uh, from the university. So um, next, please. Great. So uh, what I'd like to do here is to share with you what we've learned from talking to business owners and working with the first 30 or so uh, businesses that we've done consulting with. And um, I've put a few wor extra words in here because uh, I think it's important that everybody has an understanding of, of the topic. So basically what we've found is that many business owners have limited understanding of technology. And one of the, one of the companies we worked with said, you know, think of it as payroll. Every business has to do payroll, but once you have it set up, you don't really want to think about it anymore. It's got to run by itself. And I think for many business owners, we found that technology means email or a website. And so it's not something that is really front of mind or a very important issue. And so there's a struggle, a natural struggle to learn about technology and, and how to bring it into your own organization. And that's what we're, we're working on with, with TACES is to try to help that. And as I mentioned earlier, it's really important that you think about who is the person in your company that's going to be responsible for thinking about technology and doing something about it. You as the business owner may or may not have the time and interest, but there certainly are people in your team or people that you want to bring into the company that speak this, this tech language and are, are fluent in the use of websites and social media and thinking about what, what data means and, and what a customer might want to have for an interface. Data management, we're gonna talk a lot about as, as we go along and that's really collecting and organizing data. Uh, and we'll give some examples later on about what you can do with your own data and how you can partner with others to have a very strong use of data to, to guide your business going forward. 
every business has cybersecurity vulnerability. I'll, I'll show you some statistics later on. They're, they're quite scary. It's, I think, close to 80% of small businesses will be impacted by a cybersecurity issue uh, within the next three to five years. And so it's something that it's great to be prepared for. It's pretty easy. It's not expensive, uh, but you have to take the time to think about what it means for your for your company. And that's one of the topics that we offer the consulting on. Um, there's nobody here on the call who doesn't use their cell phone and receive digital me me marketing messages. And for your business, you may also be reaching out to customers and tracking where they are. Well, we'll talk a little bit here about how you can use data beyond websites and social media to uh, learn more about your customers, to give them better customer service real time rather than waiting for an email to come in. Customer relationship management is, is certainly related to that. I mean, you, all of us want to provide the best possible experience to the customers. So we need to understand where they are technology wise and provide service at a level, um, the right, so as I say here, the right tools and systems are, are in place. And then finally, uh, just reiterate financial management as a, as a key factor and encourage you, if you feel you need a refresher or you want to learn about the financial management of a small business, uh, please avail yourself of the support that we're giving to the uh, Cal State San Bernardino uh, program. Uh, next slide, please. So let's take a very quick visit to the website for Tacy's. And I'm going to come back to this at the end so you don't need to scribble notes down and you will get a copy of this as well. But when you go to the Tacy's website, and we'll show you again how to do that later on, but that QR code will take you there. Uh, you'll see that at the top of the page is there's Vanessa Gomez, who talks in two minutes about what the Tacy's program is about. And so that if you have time to do anything, please have a listen to her. Vanessa has been a, a cherished colleague of mine over the past close to a year and worked with us in the development of the program. Then on below, um, below uh, Vanessa's presentation, you'll find that there's four different videos you can click on. These are the four topics that I mentioned earlier. And we went through a process where we interviewed five different consultants for each of these topics and chose the one that had the best sense of what small business was about. And we asked them to prepare a 15 minute narrated video about the topic and what a small business owner should consider about that topic. And I'm gonna share with you a few um, still images from these videos a little bit later in the talk. But once again, on the website, after you see Vanessa, you can say, well, which of these things is likely to be important to me? And you can go and watch the video and say, yep, that makes sense. I want to know more. I want to have the consulting service. Um, if you find that there's multiple topics that, you, that are of interest to you, you can let me know about that. And we'll see, based on capacity, if we can provide more than one uh, free consulting opportunity. The people that you'll see in the narrated videos are the actual consultants that you'll be working with. So you can also get a sense of, you know, their language, how they're speaking, uh, and, uh, you know, base your decision also on the, on the chemistry, <laughs> if there is such a thing as chemistry in video. So those four topics we're gonna come back and look at. And then at the bottom of the page, there's, there's a, a, a simple button that you click on that says apply now. And all it does is takes down uh, very simple information about, about name, email, how to contact you basically. And then I will reach out to you and we'll talk about what your business is about. We'll decide which of these topics is the most relevant for you based on what, what you think. And then we'll go ahead. If everything sounds good to both of us, we'll go ahead and set you up with the consultant. We do wanna do this or we are going to do this during the course of this year only. So this project is over, the funding is over as of December, the end of December. So if there's something that sparks your interest, it's much better to act in the next couple of weeks um, so that we can make sure that the consulting is delivered. And you will receive six to eight hours of the consulting uh, from the specialist. 
And so when you hit the apply now, that'll just trigger the, the process. So we tried to make it really straightforward uh, for you all to engage. Um, next, please. And I will repeat this slide um, later on at the end of the presentation. And this gives you my email address. It gives you the, the email address for the TACES program. It repeats the, the QR code and the, the click on the apply now button. And uh, just reinforces that these videos you can watch for free, the ones that are on the website. You don't have to sign up for anything to watch them. So it's a good educational experience for you and your team. So let's take a look, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's take a look now. We'll do a little bit of a deep dive into each of the four topics. And then I'll just summarize and come back to this, how you can apply. So uh, I'm gonna take a sip of coffee here. You guys are very welcome to do the same. All right. So these are images from the actual presentations that, that you'll find on the website. Um, the, the company uh, Linked Objects, which is a San Diego based company, um, is a specialist in working with businesses that do mobile marketing. And so one of the messages that they'll be given giving is there are 43 billion connected devices to the internet out there already. And in the Inland Empire, it, it, it's a similar situation. There's hardly a person anymore. In fact, I think I saw that cell phone ownership is 95% of people now. So your customers all have connectivity to the internet and to you in various ways. Next slide, please. So, and the internet in itself is also connected to all kinds of different sensors, all different types of modes of communication. There's new tools for artificial intelligence. I think you probably all have heard about chat GPT. Um, as part of TACES, we have a webinar about chat GPT for business owners that we'll provide you the link to as well. And then the question about what you do with all the data, all of the connectivity, that's the general area of analytics. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Next slide. So here are some examples about how the internet of things, IOT can impact your business. One of the challenges for many of your businesses, you know, in fact, there isn't a business that isn't data related today or will need to be in the future. Uh, I realize that many organizations that I've met uh, through Caravanserai are mission driven uh, organizations and they're so they have a social mission. And maybe data was not the first thought in the creation of the organization. But if you think about how you expand its impact in the community, a lot of it is about understanding uh, who your partners are, how you communicate with uh, your organizations, how you do outreach to people can benefit from your services. And there's day to day exponentially more data out there that you can consider what's really relevant to my business. And that's where the consultant can help you with that. Most everybody's got inventories, uh, at least if you've got a, a manufacturing oriented business and assets that you need uh, to manage, you need to deploy those very efficiently. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the robotics section later on. By the way, most of these four topics, they, they have some overlap with each other. So even if you choose just one topic, you'll be able to address you know, most of the pressing issues for your business with the consultant you're talking with. And if not, then we have a host of other relationships in the community that we can put you in touch with. So our aim, once again, at, from Riverside is to bring what we're good at while complementing what's available from all the other organizations, including, and especially Caravanserai. Um, the Internet of Things is really important for, for office practices, customer service, and managing the, the resources that you have, which are probably pretty limited in many cases. And then uh, customer experience is really critical for maintaining people's sense of touch with you to make sure that you're providing products that are expected and are successful and minimize the failures that you have by being ahead of uh, your customers. 
Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about uh, robotics and automation. Uh, for small and medium-sized businesses, uh, cost is you know, a pretty critical issue for any type of investment in technology. And so the presentation that we have here from an organization called CMTC and the man, uh, Greg, who's responsible for the robotics and automation aspects in Cal here in California, uh, he's the presenter and he's the guy who's giving the consulting service. And he's going to talk about what are known as cobots. So these are smaller scale robots like you see here in the, in the image that can be used to complement human activity. Uh, this consulting is not about how you would automate a, an automobile manufacturing line. Um, we can put you in touch with people who can help with that topic if it's, if it's relevant, but uh, cobots are the topic here. Next slide, please. Thanks. So what are some of the benefits to think about? Why, why should I even think about automation or robotics? Well, the next series of a few slides here are going to talk about things like lower costs of doing business. So how can you reduce or eliminate overtime in your business? How can you increase your production capacity using uh, automation? And then also how can you increase the, your depreciation expense? So there's always a, a financial angle uh, to these uh, technology implementations. Next slide shows uh, how you can use robotics to improve your uh, product quality. Uh, Right here we go. And that's mainly by, you know, during your manufacturing or your creation process, make sure that you're even more accurate and have repeatable manufacturing. So you can reduce human error uh, from distraction or fatigue or monotony. And also it uh, provides a reduction in the amount of uh, rework or returned goods. Next, please. And it's important to consider that, that cobots in particular offer improvements in employee work quality. It's not just a, uh, something that's gonna put people out of work. Uh, it improves, it's been proven to, to improve employee satisfaction uh, by taking care of dirty and dull tasks. Uh, I just had the opportunity to go visit the, uh, the, the uh, automation line in the Skechers factory, which Many of you know on Route 60 there, it's, it's a huge place, but at the end of the day, it's about the interface between the people who work there and the technology that they have. And uh, they spent a lot of time thinking and working about that. Um, it's also an opportunity to provide employees with uh, education, enhanced training on uh, programming and problem solving tasks and in management of these uh, complex systems. I think we're advancing through, there we go. And uh, yeah, and then the uh, last thing is to, uh, on this slide here is to uh, deploy robots to um, basically free up employees that you have that can do even more on better or contribute more on other tasks, more brain work. Next slide. Um, certainly there will be the benefit of increased output uh, because we all know there it's a very tight labor market right now. And so if you're able to deploy a cobot, and these things, by the way, typically cost from, from around $20,000 to $50,000 and can be implemented in one to four weeks uh, to do you know, straightforward types of either laboratory work or um, packing and shipping, different types of things that, that small businesses uh, find themselves doing. Robots, of course, don't stop. For breaks or lunch so you have the opportunity to run full shift and also run things overnight if you uh, if production capacity is an issue for you uh, and you're not able to get the, the skilled workforce that you need then uh, this is definitely a, an attractive thing to consider uh, next one please let's shift uh, gears a bit uh, to the third of the four that i'm going to be talking about and this is cybersecurity and Cybersecurity, frankly, like finance, should be a topic that every one of you feels comfortable with. And I would recommend this topic, along with the data analytics, probably as the top two priorities for, 
for most uh, growing small businesses. Next slide. So we're working with a, a company called Seclex, which is from Riverside. And uh, they've you know, let us know, they've provided us with, with some of the data about you know, how many trillions of dollars this may cost, which is hardly relevant for the Inland Empire. But what is, is that uh, their data shows that 43% of cyber attacks are aimed at small to medium businesses and only 14% are prepared to defend themselves. And cybersecurity shown on the next slide just shows some of the, the types and you've probably heard of most all of them and you may have experienced them. Next slide, please. So it's things like phishing attacks, people trying to get your password, people trying to get malware in to, to grab data. And then there's increasing sophistication, which you know, we all suffer from that you get stuff on your cell phone even now that people ask you to download to because your account is expired. And it's all kinds of different uh, ways of attacking to gather data that they can sell onwards and um, hold you. It's not mentioned here, but ransomware is getting to be really ridiculous uh, in the numbers of attacks and the amount of money that companies are having to spend to buy their way out of ransomware. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> so it's important for cybersecurity that what you should think about is how do you prevent, and prevention is the key word here, financial losses, losses of productivity. I mean, if somebody shuts down your website or your, your business functionality, uh, that can have a major impact on your, your ability to continue business. It certainly can affect your reputation. Who hasn't gotten uh, you know, phishing attempts or different types of, of email fraud. Uh, and those things, you always have to go back, you go back to the person who came from purportedly and they don't know anything about it, but they, you start thinking about, well, are they really controlling their own cybersecurity environment? You also, in many businesses, will have legal liability if people come in and hack your sites or change your, your, your business um, activities you could have a liability there as well. And it may in the future also affect your ability to get insurance as a small business owner. It may be, I think it will be more and more required that you demonstrate that you have, you know, some basic elements of cybersecurity. And our consultant in that area, Seclex, um, will be help you out and talk that through. And then, as I mentioned, business continuity, the last thing you want to do in an environment which is getting increasingly strong in growth uh, is to lose out on that opportunity to grow. So those are some thoughts about cybersecurity. The last topic is um, data analytics for small business. That's on the next slide. And frankly, data, and you can go on to the next slide, data underlies just about everything that we're talking about here today. And so I thought it'd be helpful if I shared a, a definition of what data is. And you've probably read this before I'm even done speaking, but there's three different kinds of data. Uh, one is the data that you as a business owner have. So who are your customers? What are your sales records, sales transactions? What kind of web traffic, uh, website traffic are you getting? And you also, many of you have inventory data or the results of, of uh, you know, product experience um, that, that you may have collected data on. But the neat thing about data, and I frankly just learned this by working on TACES over the past couple of years, is that there's real strength that can be had by marrying your data with two other types of data. One of them is public data. So just imagine that you have a business that uh, is for a luxury goods product. And you're in, in, uh, in Riverside or Moreno Valley or, or in the desert, and you have data about the census. So you know what the average income is of, or what business people are, are working in. So that's all free and public information that you can say, okay, maybe I can target my marketing activities more effectively. Let's say that uh, you're a manufacturer of umbrellas and you know that there's going to be a rainy season coming up. 
Uh, that's all forecast months in advance by the weather service and that's all free data. But then you can you know, structure your marketing campaign uh, to sell more umbrellas ahead of time, for example, rather than be out of stock at the time that the rain comes. Very simple example. Event calendars are also all public. You know, uh, the business owners at Canyon Crest in, here in Riverside want to know when the students are going to be at UC Riverside. One of their opportunities, one of their major events on campus that they can link into and that they can promote their products and services. So that's uh, uh, examples of public data that you can use to enhance your your ability to be in touch with, with customers and be more efficient. And there's a third type that is really important as well. And we give some examples here about data from partners. So we have really rich resources from the counties, from Riverside County and from uh, San Bernardino County. There's data about traffic patterns from the transit authorities. So if you had a product that was related to people driving by and getting a message on their cell phone, you would know, you know where to target those activities. And then of course, even stuff, probably a quarter of you or a half of you wear a Fitbit or some other wearable device. So you can partner with the manufacturers of those devices to download their information. And we have a great example of a technology that we worked with a, a group from Cal Baptist University. They developed a, a set of eyeglasses that is used to, to scan the surface of the eye to see if you've got high pressure in the eyes and as a way of detecting things like glaucoma. And uh, so what they did is they've worked with us and our, our data analytics people, and they have now uh, built into their product the data from the weather. So for example, the temperature and the air pressure affect the surface of the eye. Uh, they also um, have the Fitbit linkage so that they know what the patient's, the person's blood pressure is at any time and heart rate. And they can make correlations between these and the efficiency or the effectiveness of, let's say, a drug treatment. So it sounds pretty high tech, but this is where the consultant can, can understand your business and say, uh, you should you know, think about data in these different dimensions. Data analytics is on the next slide. And very simply, what that means is what do you do with all this data, right? And you have to think about data as information. It's, you have to always think about its accuracy, where it came from, what context it's used in. And you also realize that not all data is useful. So there's a lot of stuff out there that's garbage. So when you think about data analytics, you have to be very selective as to what you choose and what you rely on. Uh, because it, it, you know, it has to do with your, your credibility. And that's, once again, where uh, the consultant that we work with, DataSleek, uh, and they're out of LA, uh, what they're really good at. Next, please. So that, I wanted to go over just a couple of slides about why small businesses should, in general, invest in, in data analytics. And if you go to the next slide, please. We'll, we'll give some examples. So certainly for competitive advantage, there isn't a business that over the next five to 10 years has to compete. I know that many of you have, have small target audiences. You're doing, uh, you have a, a, a concept, a project that delivers benefit for families and, and for the region. Well, why can't that be expanded to other regions? Why can't we bring that, that program elsewhere in the Inland Empire and in inland Southern California and, and even brought more broadly. So uh, it's really important that you think about uh, being able to expand for competitive advantage that you can provide a service that others can't. And it's important to start thinking about data now, but perhaps even before you need it. And this type of consulting uh, work will be good. And then you can always go to the website and have a refresher by looking at the, uh, the videos, narrated videos that we have um, available. And it's also important for, you know, in terms of the competitive advantage to understand your competitors better. One of the things that, uh, we, there, there are several studies that show that the, the I think it's like 45% of the, the time that businesses fail 
it's because they haven't done enough analysis on their competitors and, and on their customer's choice. So these are reasons why uh, digging into your data is important. Next, please. Of course, you want to not only keep your customers and deliver a very high level of service, you want to retain them. So you want to make sure that you have loyal customers because their value to you will be with very little effort, will be repeated year after year after year. So anything you can do to attract and retain customers is important. And uh, certainly we're all dependent upon finding new customers, people to work with. And uh, so you have to have a strategy and a lot of it's driven by data and connectivity to new customers as well as ones that uh, you have already. And by understanding how your customers think and behave uh, as well as you can, it allows you to uh, change the way that your company interacts with those customers. Next, please. That's great. There are so many ways today to reach people. And uh, up here in Idlewild, I have an example. There's We have uh, an old print newspaper that's been going for 70 years, still around, but not doing too well. Somebody from Austin, Texas, who uh, specializes in doing very beautiful, uh, sleek looking newsletters for communities has started introducing a newsletter up here that's gonna be 12 pages now that's attracting more interest. And we've got a, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 uh, websites, many of them Facebook pages that are reaching out to different aspects or different groups in our community. We only have 3000 people here. So it's there are many different channels for reaching people. Uh, and so typically you have limited time and bandwidth to reach out to, to customers. So you have to do it smartly and your budgets are usually not big. So you have to test and try things, collect data on it, and decide whether it's working or not and, and readjust or pivot your, uh, your marketing campaigns. Uh, next, please. And I think the last, uh, I've got two more slides or two or three more slides here on data. For those of you who are doing manufacturing or are inventorying or warehousing goods, you know, operational efficiency about your supply chain both outgoing and then incoming supplies, it's all about data. So if you can identify ahead of time, as I mentioned in the example with the umbrellas, uh, if you can identify when your demand is going to occur or what parts you're gonna need to do assembly ahead of time, uh, that's all about managing data. And uh, stock optimization, okay, that's the example that, that I just gave as well. Taking a look, careful look at what your customers are asking and projecting what their demand is likely to be in a holiday season, for example, um, is also going to enable uh, improved factory management. Just a quick second. Okay. There, next and last one, or next to last one. One of the things that uh, is increasingly doable today is what's known as real-time analytics. And it's not a very complicated concept when you think about the example of what um, many of you probably use Waze or one of the other traffic monitoring uh, apps. So you get in real time exactly how long it's going to take for you to drive from Palm Desert to Idlewild. And it's just uncanny how accurate that information is. And it's enabled by 5G and the Internet of Things. And it helps you make decisions uh, in real time. It helps you predict, in this case, a road to go on or a path to follow. So forecasting demand by having current data and having it at your fingertips is really important. It allows you to react to situations that are rapidly evolving. And uh, it also allows you to pick up and spot what your competitors are doing. It's relatively easy these days to, to set up alerts that send you information either every day or even hourly in some cases. If let's say the gas price on the corner has changed and you, you need to you know, adjust what you're doing. And then fraud detection will also enable you to pick up 
when there's unusual activity going on in your website and figuring that out now instead of waiting for a report at the end of the month. And that's, uh, you know, maybe you can think of that in terms of your credit card um, fraud detection systems. Okay, in the last uh, slide in this uh, section is prediction and diagnosis. The whole idea with data is that you can understand your customer, its relationship to what you're doing and predict what they're likely to do tomorrow. It'll help you identify new business opportunities. It'll help you in managing the risks that your business face. And also it'll help you be resilient and recover more quickly from challenges that you have. And these four topics, uh, these are things that the consultant will go over with you and talk about which of these are most relevant for your business and practically what you can do uh, with, with your own resources. So the next slide, of course, it was not the last one. The next one is uh, back to financial fitness. And here too, data allows you to understand what your real costs are in getting new customers, for example, or maintaining a customer, figuring out what your return on investment is so that you can go out to a bank and make a, a good uh, cohesive story about, about what your financing requirements are. And then also help you understand what's most important in your business to keep an eye on with these so-called uh, performance uh, indicators. So I hope I've, uh, with these examples, uh, talked about the importance of data and how that's interwoven with the 5G and internet, with automation and robotics, and how with, with cybersecurity, you can keep that data secure and proprietary so that it stays your own. So my last two slides, uh, really last two, are to go back to where we were before to encourage you to go to the TACES website. Uh, just take two minutes to hear about the program overall from Vanessa, and then grab a cup of coffee, choose a topic and listen to the 15 minute presentation and think about, is this important for me? Can this help me with my competitiveness, attraction of workforce and the like? And am I the right one in my organization to be listening to this? You know, maybe, Joe down on the on the production line is the one who should be listening to this and tell me whether this is important or not. So think about who the technology, what we call gatekeepers are in your organization, and then act by clicking on apply now and uh, you'll come into me and uh, we'll talk and get you set up. So we're not trying to serve the whole world. I want to serve another hundred customers between now and the end of the year. And I would really love if 10 or 20 of you, you know, were uh, to act on that because I think that we want to make sure that we provide these types of opportunities uh, equitably throughout the, uh, the Inland Empire. So um, that's it. And then I'll be happy to take questions. Um, I'm going to leave the next slide on so that if you wanted to write down uh, the contact information, uh, you're welcome to do that. If you wanted to take a picture of the QR code, you're welcome but we will uh, send you a one-page flyer reminder about today's talk and uh, also provide access to the slides that I've showed. So thank you so much for, for listening. I, I appreciate the chance to speak with you all. And I hope that uh, through our partnership with Caravanserai uh, that we can bring uh, you know, these, these services to complement what Caravanserai brings with its educational uh, opportunities in entrepreneurism. So thanks very much. And uh, if there are any questions, um, Caro, would you tee them up for me, please? Absolutely, David. Thank you so much for your presentation. It was very helpful and also plenty of details for uh, businesses. I would definitely encourage you to apply and contact David, maybe to explain uh, also what is your business about, because we never know how these four topics can apply for what you're doing, regardless of uh, the size of your business or maybe the stage of development of your business. So I really encourage you to, to do that. And also because it's a great opportunity to expand your network. It's incredible how you see it. And also David uh, in particular can help you with that. And uh, so my last comments based on the presentation that David gave, 
um, would be maybe providing or maybe putting together a list of questions that you would like to uh, prepare for your uh, consultation or maybe uh, for following to follow up with David. Because sometimes we think that maybe one of these topics are not necessarily related with what we are doing, but we never know, especially with cybersecurity uh, topics. <clears throat> Because it's a very uh, new topic for small businesses, we don't know exactly how this uh, field is going to evolve in the future, but definitely it's going to be a very good and powerful tool for you to uh, design um, your strategies for marketing, for uh, other competitors as well. So I definitely, if I were you, we have a, here 43 participants, at least 40, uh, you know, should follow up with that specific topic. Uh, we'll give you a very strong competitive advantage as well for um, other competitors and also for your business and also to secure clients because it's um, you know important to say to your clients that you know uh, I was prepared with this topic. I understand that maybe you are concerned about the information that uh, you are giving us, and so you in advance can uh, send a message to your client based on what you have learned from the cybersecurity consultation, for example. And lastly, uh, because I don't wanna stop you from uh, for asking questions, but um, it is all I would like to also share with you that when we um, learn new topics, it's important for uh, also, it, it is part of our personal development as well as an entrepreneur. And this is also our mission in, in Caravan Survive Project. So having said that, uh, thank you so much, David. I'm gonna pass the floor uh, to the audience for them to open, feel free to open the mic and ask all the questions that you have for them. And then there's also uh, some questions in the chat that perhaps you could uh, read out as well. I noticed one uh, question from somebody who's in Culver City. Uh, the the TACES program grant stipulates that the person that we work with has to either live in the Inland Empire, so Riverside and San Bernardino counties, or um, have their business activities in the county. And what we found is that most all companies that we that have applied um, fit those categories. So usually because they want to expand into the Inland Empire, um, but many people live here and have their business outside. That's okay. We'll, we're happy to work with you because you're going to create jobs for the region. Perfect. And the last thing I wanted to, last thought, you may be wondering why there's a picture of a laboratory uh, behind me. <laughs> and that's because I, uh, one of my, one of my jobs is I run a, what's known as an incubator, a wet, a wet lab incubator on the UCR campus. We have 10 companies from the region that are doing experimental research uh, in everything from battery components to uh, designing new drugs for cancer. And uh, so if any of you are looking for laboratory facilities, uh, we have the only wet lab incubator in the Inland Empire at UCR, and I happen to be the one who manages it. So I'd love to uh, answer any questions you might have. We also have in downtown Riverside, uh, another incubator called Excite, where people are doing work on electronics and AI and data. Uh, that's also a resource that's available uh, at very minimal cost to uh, small business owners. So anyway, I'll uh, be happy to take some further questions. Yes, David, they have questions in the chat here. Uh, they are asking how many, up to how many topics they can apply for uh, for this program. And right. So maybe the dates or the due dates for this application, because I understand that this is a one-time opportunity this year. Yes, that's right. The, the program, we must have the, all of the consulting completed by the end of December or the 20th of December. So I would just urge everyone to think about it now. Um, we have capacity to, uh, to take on another, we're about halfway through the program, so another 100 or so uh, businesses. Uh, but I would ask that you think about it over the next couple of weeks. And, and make a decision or get in touch with me and ask questions that will help you uh, make a decision. Uh, depending on the demand, um, thus far, we've just been giving one topic per company. Um, however, we'll see how the demand shapes up and it may be that we're, we're able to offer more than that. 
in the event you do have an interest in a second one and we can't do it through TACES, we will direct you in any event to resources around the county that can help you with the topic. Great, thank you, David. Um, I'm gonna invite the audience, if they have any questions, feel free to open your microphone as well. Um, and if anybody has a question in Spanish, uh, you can certainly pass that or give it to Carolina and she'll translate for me. If it's French or German, I speak both, so I can <laughs> I can answer those, but that may not be too relevant. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Oh, uh, here we have uh, Ariane. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, he is or she is in uh, Culver City. And, uh, they are asking if they qualify for, co for a consultation. Yeah, that's that's why I made the comment earlier that it's got to be uh, related in some way to the Inland Empire. I have a question, if I may. Does the program facilitate um, connections with partners in order to obtain partners' data? I'm Zana, by the way. I am in the Riverside. Um, incubator and I run a start startup for innovation of medical devices in treating autism. So my question is, does this program also facilitate uh, maybe consulting how to reach to partners, especially public offices who have a lot of public health data? Thank you. Thanks for your question, Sana. By the way, this is not a planted question. I, I do work with Sana in a separate program down at Excite. Uh, she's developing a really interesting technology for helping children train the, uh, the mus musculature and the nervous system in their mouth to enable them to speak properly and uh, when they're autistic. And so the connectivity to resources, it's not part of this particular program. This is more uh, helping people understand what the impact of technology could be. But as part of our commitment to working with SANA, uh, we have what's known as our Epic Small Business Development Center. And we certainly do, uh, through mentoring, uh, work to provide that connectivity. So uh, uh, thank you for the question, SANA. And yeah, this is just one program out of 15 that the university offers. And uh, Today, we're not able to go into all of those details, but uh, if I'm invited back, I'd be happy to share more about what the university has to offer. David, thank you so much. I have a question. Uh, the potential participants in this program, do they have to be established, already established as a business or uh, they might not be incorporated yet and they are going through that process? So this program is open to incorporated or non-incorporated. It's open to nonprofit or for-profit companies. What we're looking for ideally are businesses that have an employee or two or more because you typically are thinking about competition and, and new products and hiring and uh, things like that. Those are the ones that often benefit the most. Uh, we have had a couple of solopreneurs who have been talking with me shown that they've got an idea about what they want to do, where they, how they want to grow their business, how they're going to have impact locally. And we've admitted them to the program and they've done, you know, they've had, uh, I think, a lot of value from it. So Ideally, you know, you'll have a company that is up and running, uh, has some revenues, and you as the business owner has the time to put the brain power into the discussions with the consultant. That, that's, that, that's who gets the most out of it. Uh, good morning, David. This is, uh, this is Carrie. Um, for my business, I'm working on a, a culturally attuned uh, chat box to that integrate the lifestyle medicine, dementia screening, and mm -hmm. personalized uh, recommendation. And for me, I have looked at the, the topic you just mentioned. It seems there are a few topics that align with my interests. So for, for me, I should pick 
uh, let's say two or three of them, and then you tell me which one that I go for, or I prioritize which one that is my need, and then and then uh, and then we communicate, and then come up with the one that that fit both of us, uh, how it works. Uh, so you go to the website and um, think about which of the topics you feel is most relevant. You click on the apply now button and I will get your information and I will call you. And then we'll have a short chat about just what your business is and what you think, which one is most relevant. I may, co I may suggest something else that happens about, I don't know, 30% of the time. Um, and then we'll get you set up with the, the consultant. Oh, okay. So anyway, I just picked the one that seems to me it is the most relevant. If it is not the case, you will advise me to come up with another one, right? Uh, yeah, I'll suggest what might be more relevant. But okay. uh, in general, I find the business owners know, know their business and where their weaknesses are and mm -hmm. opportunities. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, David. We have a couple of more questions here and also contact information from people that is participating in this. Oh, great. Yeah, that's excellent. I'm looking forward to following up with everyone. I will get the email addresses from mm -hmm. Caro, unless you tell her not to share that. But then I'll, I will send out, you know, a, a one pager that summarizes everything that we've, we've said today and has the links that you can follow, uh, follow up on. So the idea is just to give you a chance to uh, think it through and, and then contact us as easily as possible. And we'll keep, of course, if you're working with Caravanserai, we will you know, keep them in the loop on the work we're doing together. Excellent, David. So yes, uh, you're... go ahead, someone uh, open the mic, sorry. Yes, I was gonna ask, can you guys um, share the PowerPoint and also drop the link to the apply in the chat box? because we can't click on it from the screen. Absolutely. So if you can drop the actual link, I wanna apply like now, I'm so pumped. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great, yes. Yeah, Carol. Um, uh, in the meantime, we've shared in the chat uh, David's contact information and also the flyer that uh, David was referring to. So you can review a little bit the, the summary of the four topics that you can apply for. And we're gonna share with you the, um, the link. Thank you so much. So that you can apply directly as well. <laughs>